about lean or legs those are the things i check for lean might be a flat tire uh, a broken spring or a broken bushing or broken uh, suspension that is the shock, shock absorber and all those things the spring the lift spring they might broke and that will, that will cause the truck to lean on one side like this so if you see the truck leaning in the morning make sure you check all those things before you move and then you also check for portals you can check for coolant oil or power steering leak if you see that on the floor make sure you get it truck fixed before you move it and then you also check for your lights. Some people say lean lights and leaks. So you check for all those things. So now we'll start from the top. This truck, like I said, is divided into six parts. You have to, you have to pre-trip all those six parts. You have the top, you have the bottom, you have the left, you have the right, and you have the front and the back. You have to pre-trip all of them. Make sure all the equipment on this truck are working. So I'll, I'll start from the top. Check my three ID lights and my two marker lights, or you just call them clearance light, all of them, we say marker light, you can call them that. They are amber in color, mounted and secured to the vehicle, not been broken or cracked, I detect no moisture or condensation. Moisture is that kind of water or frost that will sit inside, the, inside the, 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 the light. Okay, after that, you come to the right hand side, you check your windshield, mounted and secured to the vehicle, not been broken or cracked. You check the windshield rubber seal around it, mounted and secured to the vehicle, not been broken or cracked, and it's not leaking. The windshield tell them there is no illegal sticker on it. I will check my state inspection sticker. This truck just passed inspection yesterday. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle. Not been broken or cracked and it's current. Okay. After that, you check your windshield wiper arm and the blade on this side. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle. Not been broken or cracked. Okay. Not missing all boxes. And then I will check my fender mirrors. Some people call it hood mirrors. Fender mirrors. Make sure the glass is clean. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle. Not been broken or cracked. And then I'll check my grill. This is called a grill. If you want to forget the grill, the name of grill, just remember barbecue grill, you know, grill. Yeah, mounted and spent on the vehicle, not been broken or cracked. And then I'll check my two front headlights. One, two, mounted and spent on the vehicle, not been broken or cracked. I detect no moisture or condensation. Okay. And then I'll check my turn signal, both of them. One, two, mounted and spent on the vehicle, not been broken or cracked. The, the windshield and the turn signal, they are in proper color, which is white and yellow. You have to tell them the proper color. White and yellow, and I detect no moisture or condensation. I'll check my phone bumper. Mounted and scanned on the vehicle, not been broken or cracked. Okay, and then I'll check my license plate. Mounted and scanned on the vehicle, not been broken or cracked, and my license plate, plate is covered. See, it expires December 2022. Go. Then, after that, now I open the hood. I open the hood on both sides. Some people open the hood from the front. They step on that thing and pull it, but you can open it this way too. Okay, I come to now, you know, I started from the driver's side, so now I come to the passenger side. So I will check my coolant and my coolant reservoir mounted and secured into, into the vehicle, not been broken or cracked. Is at a proper level which has to be between maximum and minimum and i detect no leaks and the cap is on tight you have to tell them that i'll check all my coolant hoses mounted and scared to the vehicle not been broken or cap uh not missing not bolts or screw you have to come close and you know, so that you see the, the part properly yeah and it's not leaking all my hoses they are not damaged and they're not leaking and then after that I'll check my, 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 my coolant, how do you call it, radiator. That's my radiator, mounted and scanned to the vehicle. I've been broken or cracked, and it's not leaking any fluid. Okay, then I'll check my frame. Mounted, mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not been broken or cracked. I detect no illegal welds on it. I'll check my windshield washer fluid. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not been broken or cracked. It's at a proper level, and it's not leaking. Winter time, make sure you have enough windshield washer fluid in your truck. Okay, that's my AC compressor at the, at the, at the top. AC compression means the air conditioned compressor. This compressor works with the air condition. Mounted and secured to the vehicle, not been broken or cracked. And my AC compressor is belt driven. The belt say I detect no abrasion, bumps or cuts, or no more than three quarter inch of a play on the belt. And then below my, my AC compressor, I have my alternator. Mounted and secured to the vehicle, not been broken or cracked. And my alternator is belt driven, that is being turned by the belt. 
So on my belt, you, you say I detect no abrasion bumps or cuts on it, and no more than three quarter inch of flare. And the alternator say I detect no free wires on it, or no burnt wire, no free or burnt wire. Because this one charges your battery. The alternator should have no free or burnt wire on it, or no corrosion. Okay, now I'll check my water pump. Like the, the guy, other guy said, how do you de detect your water pump? You look for the hose that connects to the coolant radiator that goes into the motor, the engine. So that's how you detect your water pump. So that's my water pump because this hose here from the radiator goes into it. Mounted and secured to the vehicle, no bend, broken, no crack, and I detect no leaks because the water, what it does is it cools the radiator, the, the coolant water that goes into the radiator, it cools the engine when you're driving it. So I detect no leaks, okay? And then after that, you, you, you tell him again that your water pump is belt driven, that is being turned by belt. See here, we have the fan, it's connected to the motor here. So it's belt driven. So the belt you detect no abrasion bumps or cuts on it. And no more than three quarter inch of plate. Then I come to my left spring mount on both sides. Left spring mount on the front. There's another mount over there. Mounted and what the left spring mount does is mount the left spring. Mounted and scaled to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack, no missing not bolts or screw. Then down below this the left spring mount, on the left spring mount, I have my my left spring itself. It's called a left spring. If I detect one fourth of crack or one fourth of missing left spring on this door, I'll place it out of service. Make sure that it's not 25% crack. Even a small crack can cause it to get worse. So when you see that small crack, make sure that it's replaced. So my left spring is mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack. Then this bolt is called a U bolt. You see, it looks like the letter U. It's like this. It's bolted up there with some kind of bolts and screws. So make sure it's mounted and secured to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack. Then this is called the, the how do you call it? The U-bolt anchor plate. That's an anchor plate. Mounted and secured to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack. Some people call it U-bolt plate, but you can call it anchor plate. And so, some people even call it spacers. You can say spacers or U-bolt plate or anchor plate. Mounted and secured to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack. That's my shock and my shock mount, shock absorber mount. Mounted and secured to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack. It has fluid inside of it, so I detect no leaks. It has fluid, okay? Then, these are my brake hoses and my ABS sensor. Mounted and secured to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack. On my brake hose, I detect no leaks. Anytime you talk about brakes, you have to talk about leaks, no leaks, okay? I, you detect no leaks on the brake hose, and my ABS sensor, I detect no bone wire. That's my brake chamber, brake chamber clamp. Mounted and secured to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack. Okay, I detect no leaks again because the brake chamber. If you hear any leak, that means your brakes are going to be your brakes are going to fail. So make sure you detect no leaks. And then that's my push rod. This is a slack adjuster, mounted and secured to the vehicle, not bent, broken or cracked. With the brakes apply, or when I use a glove and pull it very hard, it should not go more than one inch. If it's more than one inch, that means it's too slack for your brakes to function well. So it should not be more than one inch of play. Okay. And then the push rod has a, how do you call it? It has a color key here on it. And then I'll check my, my brake drum. That's a brake drum inside here, pointed for me. That's a brake drum, mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack. And that's a brake pad, mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack. And there should be no oil or grease or any contaminant between the brake drum and the brake pad. Okay? So you detect no oil or grease on them. And it's clean inside, inside of it. And then you have to tell them your brake pad should not be dangerously thin like a penny. Because if it's dangerously thin like a penny, it causes separation between the brake pad and the brake drum. And that could also cause your brake to fail. So you want your brake pad to be at least a quarter inch of, of padding. It should be at least a quarter. It should not be dangerous, too dangerously thin. Okay? So tell them about that. Now, I'll check the inner wall of my tire, the top wall and the outside, outside wall of the tire. For abrasion bumps or cut the tread depth see how deep is it no more than four slash no yeah no no less than sorry no less than four slash 30 second of tread okay it should be no less than four slash 30 second of tread that is the tread depth should be at least four slash 30 second of tread depth okay and i detect no abrasion bumps or cuts on it i'll check my outer rim Mounted and scaled on the vehicle, no bent, broken, no crack, no illegal welds on it. I'll check the inner inner rim also. And then I'll check my log nuts. Mounted and scaled on the vehicle, no bent, broken, no crack. I detect no shiny metal or hospital or indicate looseness. I'll check my hub oil seal. 
mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not then broken or cut at the techno <coughs> It has some ceiling size and they have some fluid. If that that up that up, that up fluid, you know, start leaking, it might it might cause your brakes to trip trip because it will leak into the brake pad and the brake drum. That's why you have to check it for no leak, your brake pad and brake drum. Because the hub, the hub will still have a leak. If it has a leak, it would leak into the brake pad and brake drum. When you apply your brakes, your brakes will also fail because the truck, the, the brakes will be tripping. It will be tripping, you know, stop the truck. So, I'll check my hub oil seal. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not been broken or cracked. Sorry, not the hub, the valve stand. The valve stand. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not been broken or cracked. I detect no leaks. My air pressure on this tire should be at least 100, uh, 100 PSI. Okay? PSI means pound per square inch. Okay, and then you, you can use a tire gauge to check your air pressure, either a tire gauge or a rubber mallet. And some people call it rubber thumper. So remember, the rubber oil seal, no leaks, and then the valve stamp. Some people call it air stamp. Anyway, you know how to call it air stamp or valve stamp. All you need to tell them is no leak. And then tell them the, the, the PSI on your tire should be at least 100 PSI. Okay, come over. No, now you have to go through this way, all the way to the back over there. So I'll check my mirrors, mounted and scanned to the vehicle, and mirror bracket. Mirror and my mirror bracket, mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not been broken or cracked. My mirror is clean, I detect no illegal sticker, and it's properly adjusted. Okay, I'll check my steps. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not been broken or cracked. This is winter time, make sure your step is free of ice and debris, because it can prevent slip, slip and fall. If you don't have ice, if you have ice and debris on this on this step, you can fall on the on the on the ground. You don't want to fall. Then I open my truck. Make sure you meet the time you always clean. I will open my truck. The first thing I check for are three points of contact. For all my grab are one, two, and then three. The same way you enter the truck should be the same way you come down again. I don't like to see people coming down. It's not professional. If you enter the truck this way, one, two, three, that's the same way you should come down again. One, two, three. If the DMV see you face down like this, coming down, you're putting yourself at risk and they'll fail you. So make sure you enter the truck this way and then you come back this way. Okay, so we, some people call it grab bar, but I call it three points of contact. One, two, three, mounted and stop. And then I'll check my rubber seal on my door. Mounted and scared to the vehicle, not then broken or shut. Okay, now you can talk to the bike, fly on it, whatever say. And then I'll check my, my door mount. My door mount, some people call it door hinges. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle. Some of this part they have like two or three different names. So anyone you remember, just just tell them. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not been broken or cut, okay? Okay, I'll check my door latch here. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not broken. The latch is properly. Okay, after that, I come this way. Okay, don't forget this, your turn signal. Turn signal, turn signal. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken or cracked. No missing not bolts or screw. Proper color is yellow, and by the techno moisture condensation. Okay, I'll check my clear tank and the cap. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken or cracked. You don't have to tell them that you're taking it out, but you can take it out for the, when you're practicing to tell them about the rubber seal. See, some of them, they want you to take it out, some of them, they don't want you to take it out, so it just depend on the DMV that's testing you. So I'll check for this rubber seal inside. My fuel tank cap, make sure it's not damaged, okay? Because if it's damaged, your fuel will be leaking when it's surged back and forth when you're driving, and that could cause a fire. So that's the reason you want it to be on tight, and it's not leaking any, any diesel. And then I'll check my fuel tank and the strap, all the straps around the tank. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken or cut. Okay, no missing not bolts or screws. The, ta the tanks are bolted and the tank is not leaking. Okay, these are my course members. You have two sets of course members. You have course members on the tractor, then you have course members on the trailer. So these are the tractor course members. One, two here. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle. I'm mean, not broken or car, no missing not bolts or screws. That's my car truck. If I want to walk, on the, or walk anything on this truck, like I'm uncoupling the, the glad hands and everything, I should be able to climb on the step over there and then come here. So this work area is called, you understand? Uh, your work area, okay? So make sure there is no ice. There is no ice, or how do you call it? There is no ice of the grid. Make sure winter time you clean any ice that you see here. 
So it's called a catwalk, and then over there it's called the steps. The steps are over there. Mount Taylor is going to Vigbo, not Ben Bolt, not that. So while I'm here now, I try to check the airport. This is called the all the airport of the trailer. Mount Taylor is going to the Vigbo, not Ben Bolt, not that. Not missing all bolts or screw, and I detect no damage on the on the, on the bolt. Or, okay, on the on the airport. Then you use the opportunity to check your clearance light now on the trailer or marker light. Call your clearance or marker light. Mountain has been to the vehicle, not been broken or cut, pop a color, it's yellow, or amber, and I detect no more of condensation. That one is called a dummy coupler, this one. It's called a dummy coupler. Like when you unsecure your, your gliders, you, you, you secure them here if you want to box it. So it's called a dummy coupler. Mountain has been to the vehicle, not been broken or cut. Okay? Make sure it's there. Okay, now let's go to the passenger side. So you have to check this, this, this as well. I'll check everything over there because they're the same. Now, I like to start from the top to the bottom, okay? Make sure that everything is working. Now, that's called my air compressor. So the air compressor, it has something called an air compressor governor. The governor is inside, is, is, is inside over there on the, on the air compressor. So the air compressor, there you have the air compressor governor, is on the other side over there. So what the air compressor does is, is suck air from the atmosphere and store those air on your air storage tank. The air storage tank is under the body over there. So it's, it's suck air from the atmosphere, it's storing it on the air storage tank. That's the air you use to break the truck anytime you want to, you want to stop. So mounted and secure into the vehicle, not bent, broken, no crack. But he has an air compressor governor. The governor, what it does is it controls the amount of air that goes into the air storage tank. So that's what it does. He has a, a this air compressor have a safety valve and all these kind of things to make sure that your air tank don't explode. Anytime the air, your air pressure goes to up to like 125 psi, you understand? When you go 125, that's enough for you to drive the truck. The safety valve will automatically shut itself off so that your tank don't explode. So that was, that's, what, uh, that's what it does, okay? And then when you're, when, you're, when you're applying the brake again, you're taking air from the air storage tank, then the safety valve, when you get to, I think, 110 PSI, instead of one, then you open again so that you can refill. So that's what you do. So no, like for you that's taking your test, right? Your learner's permit, know the function of the air compressor governor, the air compressor and the governor, what it does. I don't think they are. Yeah, sometimes they ask questions about that safety valve. Okay, now let's go. My air compressor is not leaking, okay? It's not leaking. If you hear any easy sound, that means it's leaking. So make sure, yeah, make sure it's not leaking any, any fluid. Now, underneath the air compressor, you have the, uh, the power steering pump. That's called a power steering pump. Mounted and screen to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or So as I told you, the air compressor and the power steering pump, you have to tell them they are both mechanical or they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are driven by the engine. They work with the engine, so they are mechanical. Okay, and then you have to, because some, some other air compressor, they have belt, the older trucks. But the newer ones, they are not being propelled by belt, they are mechanical. So you have the gear you want to hear that. So tell them that they are gear, they're gear driven. Okay, they are gear driven, they want to the motor. And then you detect no leaks on them. This one, no air leak on the air compressor and the power steering floor, no fluid leak. Okay, so this one is air leak because it's sucking air from the atmosphere. And then the air compressor, what it does is pump, it pump fluid into the gearbox and it's taking this, this fluid from the, how do you call it? The air compressor, so no, sorry, from, from the power steering uh, fluid reservoir. This is the power steering fluid reservoir the fluid comes from here, it goes into there, and then it pump it to the power steering box. So mounted and secured to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or cut, you detect no leaks. You have to tell them that, okay? And then I'll check the power steering hose. Mounted and secured to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or cut, I detect no leaks. How do you know that's a power steering pump? Just look for the hose that's connected with the power steering fluid reservoir. This is a fluid reservoir. These two, you have to check, it has to be at a proper level and you detect no leaks, oil, no oil leaks on it, no fluid leaks. And the cap is on time. Okay. And then I'll check the hoses. Mounted and screen to the vehicle, no bend, broken, no car. The hoses too, you detect no leaks. Okay. Now that's a power steering uh, box. What some people call a gearbox. It's a gearbox. 
mounted and secured to the big cooler of Ben broken of cock and you detect no leaks on it. Now, I'm going to teach something. Come here, come. Normally, on the test, you come, come close. The DMV normally ask, is they will ask you, like for example, what are your steering components in this truck? You have to be able to tell them. Okay? Your steering components, number one, is this. Your steering shaft, okay? Or you say your steering rod, mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not being broken or cut. The U joint is part of your steering component, mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not being broken or cut, it's properly greased, okay? The steering gearbox is part of your steering component, mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not being broken or cut, and I detect no leaks. The pitman ham, okay, is part of your steering component, mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not being broken or cut. The castle nut and the, the quarter key on them, mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not being broken or cut, they are part of your steering component. The drag link, or some people just say three piece steering linkage. The pitman arm, the drag link, and the upper controller. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not, they are all part of the steering components. Okay? And then the lower steering arm down there, the lower steering arm, mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not being broken or cut, is part of your steering component. And then the tie rod. But the tire rod, what it does is tie two tires. So anytime you steer, it goes like this left and right, left and right. So it's part of your steering component. So I'm doing this because sometimes they will ask you, what are your steering components? You have to be able to tell them. Okay? So know your steering component. Now let's come to the, the suspension now. The suspension in this tour, okay, let me check my oil oil fill and my oil dipstick. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, no bend, broken, or crack. I detect no, no oil leaks on them. And my oil is at the proper level. Then you tell them I'll, I'll check my oil by taking the dipstick out. You don't have to take it for the test, but just demonstrate. Take it out, wipe it clean, and then pull it back inside. Make sure it's at the proper level and it's not leaking. Okay, now I come to my suspension. Now your suspension, you see the lift spring mount, right? It's called a lift spring mount. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not been broken or crack. Your frame is part of your suspension. No illegal weld on the, on the frame. And then your, your lift spring itself is part of the suspension. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not been broken or crack. Okay, and if you did see detect 25 percent of crack on your lift spring or one fourth of crack, make sure you place the truck out of service. That's your U bolts and your spacers or your U bolts and anchor plates mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack. Okay, not bent, broken, or crack, no missing out, bolt or screw. Okay, now this all the, this the, the U bolts and the spacers or the, or, the, or the anchor plate they are all part of the suspension because they help the vehicle to. You know to, to, to be suspended so so they are all and then your shock mount again is part of the suspension shock mount and shock shock absorber mounted and screened to the vehicle not been broken or crack i detect no leaks it's part of the suspension also so you have to tell them that so you see so the front the front uh, lift spring mount and the back they are all part of the suspension so if the dmv say i just want to check the suspension because they want to see how intelligent you are how, now, now the, the dmv they change all their, their method of they don't just, they don't just, uh, how do you call it, test you one way. They want to see if you know the part, if you know everything. Okay, so if they come, they say, what's the suspension on this truck, you should be able to tell them. If they ask you, what's the steering component on this truck, you should be able to tell them. So that's why I'm doing this, okay. Now I come to the brake component. The brakes, okay, you have the brake chamber, okay. Brake chamber clamp, mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bend, broken, no crack, I detect no leaks. But anytime you check the brake, it's air brake. If you hear any easing sounds, that means your brake is leaking, you have to fix the, the problem. And then your brake holes and your ABS sensors, they are all part of the brake component on this truck. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack. Okay, the ABS sensors, what it does is it prevents skid. Anytime your wheels want to lock up, it prevents it from locking up so that you can stop the truck in a safe manner. So that's why they put it there. It's a technology, okay? So no burnt wire. Your slack adjuster and your push rod, they are all part of your brake component. <coughs> Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bend, bend, broken, or crack. With the brakes apply, wheels chop. When you pull it with your finger, there should be no, uh, how do you call it? Well, when you pull it with your arm like this, with the glove, there should be no more than one inch of slack. If it's more than one inch, that means it's too slack. Okay? And then, your brake pad. Your brake pad, they are all parts of the brake component. Brake pad and your brake chamber. Okay? Your brake pad and your brake drum. So your brake pad and your brake drum, they are all part of the brake component. Or they comprise of all the stuff that make you break this truck. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack. I detect no oil or leaks on it, okay? And then I'll check the side of my, my tire. So, so now those are the parts. 
you also have the but that one don't check it okay the s cam you know because it's a drum brake it has an s cam on it so that s cam you understand when you apply the brake it go like this you understand so that's how your your, your truck your that's how your, your brake works so that's that's that one too is part of the brake component the s cam is over there okay now I will check my inner rim and my outer rim mounted and scanned to the vehicle not being broken or cut. I detect no illegal welds on them. Okay, no illegal welds on it. If you illegally weld it, you might fail inspection for that. I will check the inner top and outer tire for abrasion bumps or call the treader for this tire no less than 4 slash 32nd of tread, okay? And then this one cannot be recap, cannot be regroup, cannot be mismatched. I forgot to say that over there. So, but if you remember, whatever you forgot to say, you have to say it back. It cannot be recap, it cannot be regroup, but it cannot be, and it cannot be mismatched. It has to be virgin, that is virgin radius. It has to be from the factory. You know, you cannot use any used tire here because it's a phone. See, carry all this weight, the engine, and, it, and you know, it's alone. Over there in the back, you have two, two tires on each axle. So, but this one is just one tire, so it has to be factory well. No, no recap. Okay, now I'll check the log nuts mounted and straight to the vehicle. Uh, uh, sorry, it has to be original from the factory. The log nose mounted and scanned to the vehicle not been broken or cut. I detect no illegal, no shiny, no shiny metal or rust trade or indicate looseness. I'll check my valve stamp mounted and scanned to the vehicle not been broken or cut. I detect no leaks. No, my, my hub oil seal, sorry, that's not the valve stamp. This is the hub oil seal mounted and scanned to the vehicle not been broken or cut. I detect no leaks. That's the valve stamp here mounted and scanned to the vehicle not been broken or cut. I detect no leaks, you know. And I can check my air pressure tool or rub, uh, rubber malik or air pressure gauge. Okay, so that's the, hub, the hub oil sink cap and that's the valve stamp down there. Okay, I don't think there is anything left on the side. So now, after I check all this, then I go underneath the air storage tank. It's here. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or cap. What the air storage tank does it. It's, it's secure all the air that you that you build up through the air compressor, and that is the air that you use to break, you, you break you use to break the truck anytime you want to break. So so you use that air. So you store the air into the air storage tank, and that air storage tank should be drained at the end of every day's work. Every day when you finish working, you have to. Some of them they have a manual drain. Some of them they have automatic drain. So make sure you drain it, okay? Because if moisturized air settles on that air storage tank, it will cause your brakes to fail. So that's the reason why you drain it every day, especially winter time now. You don't want your brakes to fail, freeze. And if your brake freezes, you have to stop the truck, you chuck the wheels, and then there is a liquid they call air brake antifreeze. You can go to AutoZone or any of the big store around, and then you buy a Walmart, and then you buy the air brake antifreeze on it, and it won't freeze your brakes. So, so that's it. Okay, now, now, yeah, this one, this, this truck, he has three tanks, okay? He has the wet, the primary, and then he has the secondary tank. So you have to know about all those, those stuff, especially for you taking your, your air brake test. Okay, now check the steps. Mounted and spent on the brake, not being broken or cracked. Okay, winter time, make sure it's free of debris. Should be no, no trash or debris on it, so it can cause, can cause you to fall. You don't want to fall. Okay, now, I check my battery and my battery box. Mounted and skin to the big corner, of bend, broken or crack. And my battery, I detect no corrosion. Okay? No corrosion on my battery. I detect no corrosion. If there is any corrosion, it might cause, cause you some electrical problem. So make sure there is no corrosion. Okay? And my battery is not leaking also because that, that battery fluid they put on it can cause some leak. So make sure it's not leaking and no corrosion. So air storage tank also make sure it's not leaking anything there. Okay, now I'll come to this. My driver's side window, mounted and scanned to the vehicle. My driver's side mirror, sorry, mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not then broken or cut. The glass is clean. Make sure winter time, you have to have cleaning materials when you're driving this truck. Not only winter, throughout the time. Make sure you go to the Walmart, you buy some paper towel, and you have that windshield clean or whatever, that glass cleaner. You use that to clean. Trust me. It can save you from an accident, especially winter time. If it's snowing and this thing is not clean, you cannot see where you're going, it's going to cause an accident. Even summertime, if it's so dirty, you cannot clean it with some cleaning material, 
you might not be able to see the back of your trailer and that could cause an accident. So make sure you always clean it. So it's properly adjusted and it's clean. Okay, the, the, the mirror bracket is not damaged. That's my window, mounted and scheduled to be from a vent broken or crack. The rubber seal on the window, make sure it's not damaged because if it's damaged, it can cause air or so a water to go inside the truck. So make sure it's not damaged. And then it's my door handle. I forgot to check it on the other side. But always check your door handle, mounted and scheduled to the not bent, broken or cracked. Okay, not missing not bolts or screw on it. So I open the door, three points of contact, the same way I enter this door, always should be the same way I should come down. Enter this way, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, and then three. Mounted and scaled to the brake over, bent, broken or cracked, I come down this way. They don't want to see you come down this way, no. You have to face it the same way. I enter this way, I come back the same. So I'll check the door over sale, mounted and scaled to the brake over, bent, broken or cracked, it's not damaged. I'll check the door latch, mounted and scaled to the brake over, bent, broken or cracked. I'll check my door mount. Mounted and scanned to the brake corner, bent, broken or cracked. Okay. After I check all this on the door, I close the door. I come to my dev tank. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken or cracked. This one, they put it here for the emission to make sure that the smoke that we pick truck drivers, because they say we produce, we're contributing to climate change. <laughs> so that's why they put this still here. It's called a dev flu. At least it cleaned the emission, it cleaned it to make sure that the air that comes out of the truck. So the, 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 how do you call it? The smoke that come out of the, the, the truck is clean. So that's why they put it here, okay? For so emission, make sure it's not leaking, any flow. And then I'll come here, check my tank cap. I check my tank cap, mounted and scaled to the vehicle, not bent, broken, no car. Make sure the rubber cell is not damaged. That's my fuel tank, mounted and scaled to the vehicle, not bent, broken, no car, and it's not leaking any flow. And the straps are good. And this, these are my steps and my car work, mounted and scaled to the vehicle, not bent, broken, no car. So there was something I forgot to check over there, but come, come, come close, you're staying too far. Remember, this is a video, the people have to see, so if you're staying too far, they don't see. You see, this is called a drive shaft. See that one? This is called a drive shaft. Are you seeing that? Mounted and scaled to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or cracked. It has some U joints on it. The drive shaft and it has U joints. Mounted and scaled to the vehicle. I forgot to check it over there, I should have checked it because there's more clearance over there. And then, you also have the, this one is called a rebar. You know, reborn. That's the, the, how do you call it? Your exhaust fluid. Your exhaust, your exhaust pipe. Your exhaust pipe mounted and scaled to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or cracked. They call it reborn because it's on the floor. Some of them, they have it in the back of the, of the trailer. Mounted and scaled to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or cracked. And you detect no excessive soot on your, on your exhaust pipe. But if you see exhaust, too much of soot on it, that, that will be, yeah, that will cause, um, how do you call it? That means your, your exhaust is emitting uh, carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a poisonous fume that can kill somebody if it goes too much inside of the cab of the truck, you know? And that's why, again, you have to check the back of the cab, make sure it's not damaged. Make sure it's not damaged. So you check your exhaust, okay? Your exhaust pipe and the, and the, the, the mount on the exhaust pipe. Make sure they're not damaged. You're mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken off car. Okay, after you check all that, then you come over here, your leaf spring mount in the front and the back. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken or cracked. Not bent, broken or cracked. Not missing all bolts or screw. Okay. And you check the leaf spring. Mounted and scaled. There's a leaf spring. Leaf spring mount, leaf spring. Mounted and you detect 25% of crack on a mixed leaf spring, place the truck out of service. Okay. So you check your leaf spring and the leaf spring mount. Not missing all bolts or screw on the mount. And the leaf spring. You detect 25% of crack you place out of service to fix it. This is your brake chamber and the brake chamber clamp mounted and screened to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack. I detect no leaks. Every brake chamber in this truck has a slack adjuster. So anytime you're checking your brake chamber, check the slack adjuster and the push rod behind it. Mounted and screened to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or crack. Say with the brake supply, will stop no more than one inch of play or slack. Then check your brake hoses and your ABS sensor. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or cracked. The brake hoses are over there. And you detect no leak. The ABS sensor, you detect no bone wire on it. Okay. Now, let me come now to my air lines and hoses. You know, this is your splash guard again. Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or cracked. Now, my air line, the red one is called emergency air lines. This one operates the trailer brakes, okay? Mounted and scanned to the vehicle, not bent, broken, or cracked. And you detect no leaks. 
and then make sure the glide hand the rubber seal here this is called a glide hand this they look like a glide hand or hand shape this and this they're called glide hands see you put it up 90 degree like this and then you put it down easy to pull you want to take it up take it out again you go 90 degree up they take it out you want to put it down you go 90 degree up they put it down some people they don't know how to do this it's very hard to learn it practice because this might embarrass somebody if you don't know how to do it okay so check for this rubber seal it's yesterday i just changed this seal brown new all of them make sure it's not damaged the seals are not damaged okay now this one is called electrical cord you flip it up then you take it out that's how you took, you took it out then when you want to put it back you flip it up you put it in then this thing here has to be behind this 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 latch here so that's how you lock it mounted and secured to the vehicle on belt so the red one is the emergency airline and it has a glad hand here two glad hands and the rubber seal make sure they're not damaged and they're not leaking the blue one is called the service airlines mounted and scared to the vehicle not bent broken no car make sure you always watch the red one is always out and the blue one is in because if you if you misconnect them it will affect the, the, your, the way the, the, you, you're driving the truck so make sure you always connect them properly okay so that you don't have brake problem now the blue one is the service airline the green one is called the electrical cord make sure it's not